Hey guys, welcome to our next episode in our tutorial series. Uh, so in this episode, we're basically going to add some gravity to our player. Um, I'm going to change the scene a little bit. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. So firstly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change our grid a little here. So I'm going to change it instead of 100 by 100. I'm just going to do 10 by 10. And then our material here, I'm going to make sure I do that 10 by 10 too. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate this grid, so hold control and hit D. And we're just going to move this a little bit lower just so that our player has a platform to kind of fall off of. And then on our character, I'm just going to open up the animator and untick apply root motion. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Um, okay, so now with root motion disabled, we're not going to be um, emulating physics. Uh, we're going to do our own sort of physics here. So inside our uh, player controller script uh, will add some gravity. So firstly, let me show you what it does uh, currently. If I hit play, you'll see there is literally zero gravity implemented. So our character doesn't fall, our character doesn't even interact. Okay, so opening up our player controller script. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new header. And I'm just going to, inside the header, I'll just put gravity. And what we'll start off with is a public float for gravity. A public float for current gravity. I will also have a public float for max gravity. So our gravity will be going into the minuses. Um, we need to put a cap on it so that we don't hit supersonic. <laughs> um, and then we'll have two privates. That's not about private. Uh, and we'll have those as vector three. Uh, so one will be storing the gravity direction. And one will be storing uh, vector three, the current gravity. Um, as we've already used that name, we'll just have a gravity movement. So it matches our other movement variable. Okay, so with these five variables, we can create gravity. Uh, so let's go ahead and underneath sprinting, we'll just add another region for gravity. Okay, and inside there, we'll create a private void for um, calculate gravity. There we go. And we'll also create a private void for is grounded. And uh, for now, we'll just return the default flag for our character controller. So character controller dot is grounded. Uh, you might be thinking, why don't I just use character controller is grounded? Um, why am I creating a whole function for it? Um, and the reason is I'm going to add a few more checks in here um, later on. Uh, so for now, um, as we're adding a return, we can't tell it it's a void. We have to tell it what we're returning. It'll be returning a bool. Um, and we're going to go ahead and use this function straight away. So inside our calculate gravity, we'll put an if is grounded. So if our is grounded returns true, what we need to do is also set a, a constant gravity for when we're on the ground to basically keep us on the ground. So we don't like uh, walk over a rock and all of a sudden where our is grounded changes to false and will trigger an animation, this, that, and the other. So let's go ahead and create a public float for ground, or we'll just have constant gravity. So when we're on the ground to keep us on the ground. Okay, so if is grounded, what we'll do is we'll set gravity equals our constant gravity. Else we will be, um, basically we'll check if our gravity, so we'll say if, Gravity is larger than max gravity. 
I know it sounds a bit weird with checking larger than max, but you've got to remember gravity goes into the minuses. Um, and if it is larger, we'll do gravity minus equals. Um, I've just realized I got those two the wrong way around. Uh, gravity is going to be holding our value of gravity. Current gravity will be holding our our actual current gravity that we'll be using against the player. So instead of gravity equals constant gravity, we'll do current gravity equals constant gravity. And then I'll check here, we'll do if current gravity is larger than max gravity. And then here we'll say current gravity minus equals gravity times time dot delta time. Whew, sorry about that. I probably confused the hell out of you. <laughs> um, okay, so now we've got our max setup. We have our constant ground setup. Uh, we'll just use a calculate gravity inside our update. So we'll just pop it underneath calculate, uh, above calculate sprint. We'll have calculate gravity. Um, actually, what we'll do is we'll pop it right at the top. As we're about to use, um, we'll use some of the values calculated from here inside our movement functions. So we want to calculate those first. Um, so let's go ahead and calculate those now. So this is where our gravity direction comes into play. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting gravity movement. And we're going to set that to gravity direction uh, times by our current gravity. There we go. Um, and what we're actually, so gravity movement will be holding kind of like a uh, direction. Um, so we'll copy that gravity movement and inside our movement region, inside our movement function, uh, where we have the character controller.move, uh, we have player movement in there now. We're also just going to add our gravity movement. Um, except instead of um, right at the top here, as gravity direction, um, we kind of want it to uh, go into the negative. Uh, as we're working with gravity, so instead of moving the player up, we want it to move them down. Uh, so there is an issue with this calculation, uh, but it's fixed just by times in gravity direction by negative current gravity. Uh, it'll be more apparent in the inspector. So let's go ahead and have a look in the inspector. Um, and what we're going to do first is we need to... So the reason I've put it in a vector 3, the gravity direction, is um, say later on, we want to set the gravity to, say, example, our spaceship as opposed to just the ground. Or if we have a planet and we want to set the gravity to the center of the planet as opposed to just like a vector three dot down. Um, of course, if you're not doing anything in space and your gravity will always remain the same direction um, inside your awake, which I'm going to do this for testing now. Um, at the bottom of awake, I'm just going to set gravity direction equals vector three dot down. Okay, um, so I don't know why it keeps doing this. <laughs> um, it keeps automatically adding this using for me, uh, using system.numerics. I'm just going to remove that. It adds an ambiguous reference, which is really annoying, um, but for some reason it keeps doing it. Uh, so just make sure it hasn't added it to you if um, your vector 3.down gets underlined. Okay, so moving on. Now we have a default value set for our movement direction. Um, we'll go ahead and set up our values now. So for now, I'm going to set gravity to 10. Current gravity uh, should actually be a private variable, um, but we'll leave it as public just so we can see it. And constant gravity will set to minus 0.6, uh, just so it keeps us on the ground. Uh, so if we're walking down a hill, we stay on the ground. And max gravity, so we don't hit supersonic, will set to minus uh, 15. Okay, so let's give that a go. We'll hit play. Okay, so current gravity inside the inspector you can see is our constant gravity because we are on the ground, which is good. So as soon as I walk off here, we'll just make sure, yep, we fall. Cool. So let me walk off the edge and just make sure our current gravity doesn't go less than minus 15. There we go, stays at minus 15. Okay. All right, now you might be thinking our gravity is incredibly strong <laughs> and uh, you're right in thinking that. 
uh, what I'm going to do is where we calculate gravity movement, I'm also going to times that by time dot delta time. We'll go ahead and give that a go now. We'll see what this looks like. There we go, so that's a little better. We'll just walk off the edge here. Okay. So we got gravity. We have our max falling speed so that we don't go supersonic. And um, yeah, although the, the player currently doesn't react, uh, we'll do that in the next tutorial. Um, he does fall down now, which is good. Uh, so what? lastly, I am going to make that variable private now. Our current gravity, we don't need to see that. So I'll pop that into a private. And I'm actually going to move that down with our other little privates here. There we go. So just make sure in the inspector it looks all good. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these default values across. Just in case we ever need to reset the script. The gravity was 10. Constant gravity is not minus 0 0.6. Movement smooth. Damn, that's what? <laughs> Max gravity um, is minus 15. Okay, so we'll save those. Um, that's it for this tutorial. I will see you in the next tutorial and we'll actually start making our player react to falling. Um, and then followed by another tutorial on actually um, adding some landing animations. Um, so if we have a big fall. Okay, so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.